Hey and welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, we're going to cover off the Seaborn library and in particular, we'll be discussing the scatter plot that you can create using Seaborn. Let's get started. So, like I mentioned, today we'll be talking about scatter plots in Seaborn. Before we do that, let's take a moment to discuss what a scatter plot is. Now, you might find yourself getting data like this, where you have two different variables and you want to be able to plot them. A scatter plot is a helpful plot to be able to figure out whether or not there may be relationships between your two variables. So a scatter plot plots on an x and a y axis, and each of the different points will correspond to different points within your scatter plot. So for example, you may have one point that maps onto the one point on your x-axis and the value 5 on your y-axis, and so on. You can also enhance your scatter plot by building in different other information that we'll explore through th throughout this tutorial. For example, you can bring in a categorical or another type of variable and label it within your scatter plot, say in a different color, or a size, or a marker style. Now let's get started and begin plotting our first scatter plot using Seaborn in Python. Okay, so for this tutorial, we're gonna need a number of different libraries. We're gonna be importing PyPlot from matplotlib as PLT. We're gonna import Seaborn as SNS. And finally, we'll import pandas as PD. We won't actually need pandas throughout this tutorial, but I wanna be able to demonstrate how well Seaborn actually integrates with pandas. Now, you might be wondering, why are we importing matplotlib if this is a Seaborn tutorial? And this is because Seaborn is actually built on top of matplotlib and helps abstract a lot of the complicated functions that matplotlib provides. And so, we're not exactly replacing matplotlib, we're just building on top of it in a much more streamlined way. Seaborn was designed to be able to do a number of certain things really, really easily and really well that matplotlib might make difficult. And because of this, Seaborn is specifically designed to handle statistical types of graphs. So let's get started and load our data set. Seaborn actually comes with a lot of different built-in data sets, and we're going to be using a relatively new one that they came out with last year. So in order to do this, we're going to create a data frame and we're going to use the load data set function from Seaborn and we're going to load in the penguins data set. So what this is going to do is actually create a pandas data frame out of this data set that comes pre-installed with uh, Seaborn. So what we can actually do is print out the head of the data frame just to get a sense of what it actually looks like. So let's do that now. So we can see that we have a number of different variables here. We have a species, we have a number of different measurements, we have an island, as well as the sex. So the data set is quite rich in information and I wanna be able to make this tutorial as easy as possible to follow along with. Because of this, I'm gonna be filtering out some of the different variables found within the data set, as well as dropping null values. If you want to follow along without doing any of this, feel free. So to filter our data, I'm just going to take the species column and only include two types of species. After that, I'm also going to drop any of the missing values. So this makes our data set a little bit more straightforward to work with. The way that Seaborn actually creates a scatter plot is using the rel plot function. This stands for relational plot. And it actually is able to generate a number of different plots, including line plots, but it defaults to scatter plots, so we don't actually have to specify this. So the way that we can create this is by calling SNS rel plot we're gonna pass in the data argument. And here what we can do is pass in our data frame. This allows us when we're declaring our X and Y parameters to simply pass in the column name as a string. 
So for x, we're going to be using body mass in grams. And for y, we're going to be using flipper length in millimeters. Now, because I'm working in Visual Studio Code and not within uh, a Jupyter Notebook, we do actually have to declare the PLT show function. If you are working in a Jupyter Notebook and you don't want to write this out every time, you can use the Jupyter Magic matplotlib, and I'll spell it correctly, in line. Now, because I'm working in Visual Studio Code, I'm not going to do that. So now when we run this, we can actually see that a new window appears that provides us with the information that we asked for. So here, each record within the data set is plotted out based on its body mass as well as the flipper length. So each dot actually represents a different entity within our data set. So one of the things that we may want to do right off the bat is set a style. We can do this similar to matplotlib using the set style method. So we'll write SNS set style, and we're gonna be using the dark grid style. So let's run this again and see what this looks like with the new style applied. We can see that we now have this very beautiful dark grid on the background that helps visualize the data without inserting too many dark grid lines. Now, another thing that we may wanna be able to do is add a title as well as some more descriptive access labels. For this, we're actually gonna be using matplotlib. So we're gonna write plt title, and here we can just pass in the title directly as a string. So we're gonna be saying that we want the title to be body mass versus flipper length. Similar, we can pass in the x and y axis labels using x label. and the Y label. So now when we run this, we can see that we have a more descriptive title as well as access labels. Now, one of the great things that we can actually do is also use a different color palette. And the way that we can do this is by passing in, and we'll just do this up here, a set palette function. And for this tutorial, we'll be using the set to. And we can see that when we run this now, that it's applied this very pastel-y kind of green to it. So one of the things that we may actually want to be able to do is be able to discern between different types of sex of the penguins. When we look at this graph, we can see that as the body mass increases, as does the flipper length. Now, of course, this doesn't imply that a larger body mass causes a larger flipper length, but it does say that there's some level of correlation. But we may want to be able to see where are female penguins in this versus our male penguins. So the way that we can do this is actually by changing the color of them as we demonstrated in our earlier example. So Seaborn doesn't use the word color for this. Instead, it uses hue. So we can write hue equals sex. Now when we run this, we can see here now that all of the female penguins are labeled as orange dots, while all the male penguins are labeled as green dots. This lets us really easily discern where all of the different genders of penguins actually exist. Another argument that we can pass in is actually the size argument. So we may want to be able to see how the bill length fits into all of these different variables. So to do this, we can type size equals bill length in millimeters. And now when we run this, we can see that our uh, legend actually has a second part added to it describing what the different sizes of the dots represent. One of the things that's interesting about Seaborn is that it actually makes the sizes of the dots normalized based on the entire distribution of them. We can change this distribution by actually passing in the sizes argument, where we can say pass in a tuple of 10 to 150 to specify that we want our sizes to go from 10 to 150. 
when we run this, we can see that the sizes are a bit easier to discern at this point. We can see that as the body mass and flipper length increase, so does the bill length typically. One of the things you might notice is that the dots are simply stacked on top of one another. So here, we kind of lose this green dot in the midst of everything, and we can't really tell whether or not there are clusters underneath. So we can change this by changing the transparency of the, each dot. By default, Seaborn will set an alpha of 1. Now, if we wanted to decrease the, or increase the transparency to 50%, we could simply pass in 0.5. Now when we run this, we can see that the dots will be darker as they become more layered, and we can kind of see where these green dots actually lie. Now, one of the last things that I want to be able to take a look at with you today is being able to discern another categorical variable. One of the things we have in our data set is which species these penguins actually belong to. So what we can do, and I'm just going to take some of these out to be able to make it a little bit easier to see, is be able to pass in the style argument, and then we'll pass in species here. So when we run this, we can see now that the colors still tell apart the different sexes of the penguin, but the dots and the X's represent the different species. So we can see that for the most part, the Gen 2 species have both a larger body mass as well as a flipper length. Now, one of the things you may want to be able to play around with is actually being able to change the markers that are displayed. Again, these markers come from matplotlib, so we can use any of the mat of markers that are available within matplotlib. So for example, if we wanted to use a marker of, say, a star, we could simply type in marker equals asterisk. Now when we run this, we can see that all of our markers have been replaced with asterisks. We can also pass in, say, a capital D for uh, these diamond shapes. There are a number of different variables, and I'll provide a link in the description below to give you a full list of these markers. So I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions about creating scatter plots in Seaborn, leave a comment down below, and I'll be happy to answer it. If you enjoyed today's tutorial, Please hit the like button and click subscribe if you want to be notified of new videos just like this one. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.